be look up in less than nine minutes no waffle and i'll throw in a drop down tutorial at the end let's go so first things first what is vlookup for well in simple terms it allows you to pull data back from one column based on matching a value in another column that's it to keep things simple to start with i've just deleted a load of data in the example over to the right so we've just got five rows to deal with so the first thing to do is type equals vlookup in the cell that you want to return this employee name into You'll see, as always, that Excel, when you type a formula, will give us some prompts. And the first thing it's looking for here is lookup value. Our lookup value here is coming from the employee ID um, box that we've created here. So let's just point it at that cell D3. So we're looking up 1002, which from our table we'd expect to return John Smith. If we put a comma, it'll ask us for the next prompt, table array. So in there, we just want to highlight over the whole set of data that we're looking at. So F3 to I8 put a comma and the next thing it wants us to know is the column index number now that's where it gets a little bit more tricky less so with this small data set we want to know how many columns further than the employee id is the employee name so in our case it is the second column with employee id being the first so we put in two column two of that four column table and then the final bit is you see it's prompting us here for true or false true means that it will just get any kind of match so it will find the closest one it can false means it will only get an exact match so if it doesn't find 1002 it will fail and that's usually what we want we can type false we can type true or we can put zero for false which is a lot quicker and then close the brackets to complete the vlookup hit enter and we get john smith exactly as we expected so in the next box, we want to get the department. So I'm not going to show you through step by step again. If you want to see that again, go back to the employee name part. Instead, what we can do is copy out this formula. And to do that, click into the cell that's got the formula we've just put in, highlight over everything, press control on your keyboard and hit C. That will copy it to your clipboard. Then press escape and then just go into the next one. And in your formula bar, control V, paste, we'll just put that formula back in there. Now, if we hit enter, we'll just get John Smith again. The difference here is one thing, and it's the column reference. So if you think about the previous one where we got John Smith, we went for column two. Column three is department, and that's what we want here. So all we've got to do is change the two to a three, hit enter, and we've got sales. Exactly the same for salary. So copy it out, drop it into here, and change it to column four. 50,000. So that should match exactly now this row. 1002, John Smith, sales, 50,000 pounds. We change this to 1003. There you go. It's picked up the next row. And you could do that for a table that is infinitely long. I say infinitely long. Obviously, Excel has a restriction of around a million rows, but that's a pretty good amount to be able to get exactly what you want without any manual searching and scrolling down the whole data set. Now, unlike me, who's a lefty, VLOOKUP is a righty only. And that means that it can only reference columns to the right of the main column that we're looking at. So in our example, we took employee ID, which was the leftmost column. And then we looked up columns to the right of it based on how many more columns we went along. So the second column, the third column, and then the fourth column. If you wanted to go back a column, so if we wanted to look up uh, the employee name and then go back to find out what the ID was, you can't do that in VLOOKUP. And that is why I don't like it. In one of the coming videos, I'm going to show you index match, and that's way better than this. Now, that's not totally right enough VLOOKUP. It's great for scenarios like this. And in most cases, you can do what you need to, but it can be quite restrictive. So you probably noticed a minute ago that instead of having to type 1003 to change the value that we're looking up against, I had a drop down in there. So instead of having to look down the whole column and pick values that are there because you might not know what values are there also if you're that far down your data you probably know the answer to what the employee name is in the department so for small sets of data vlookup's not particularly useful but imagine if you had a huge set of data and you had a drop down that showed you all the available options that you could pick and it would just bring back um, the employee name department and salary based on your selection let me show you how to do a simple drop down so first thing we want to do is click on the cell we want to change the value in then we go up to data and then data validation and data validation again. And in this allow, so this is allow for the cell we've selected. You want to drop this down, hit list, and then it will ask you for a source. We want to just click into the list of employee IDs that we want. You see here it's put F4 to F8. Click OK and then simply drop that down and it has got all of those values. Great. 
Now here's a really useful trick. Watch what happens if I stick another record in here, 1006. And if I drop this down, you can see that it's only got 1005. So we would have to go back into this data validation and we would have to change this to equal F9. So it's got all the latest values in the range, unless you make it a table. So let's just go into here, insert table. It will suggest the range that you've got. We've clicked on my table has headers, employee ID, etc. at the top. Click OK. Now it knows that that is a collective of data. So what it should do now when we drop this down is pick up that new value. Equally, if I put 11007 in there and go back into this drop down, it's recognized that as part of the table and that has become part of the drop down as well. Totally dynamic. But that now leads us on to another problem. So yes, we've made this a table and we've linked this drop down to that table. So it expands dynamically as we create new rows. What we haven't done though is updated the VLOOKUP to look at this table. So it still looks at F3 to I8, which misses the bottom two rows. If, however, it was a table, we can replace this F3 to I8, drop that out, and then cover here. You can see that instead of putting a range F3 to, what would it be, I11, it has put in table four, hashtag all. So it knows that this data is structured as a table. If we hit enter on that, and then we add a new row, we can see if we pick 1008, it will get a zero because there's nothing in here. But if we put test user in there, it's going to pick up that username. What I'd recommend is linking it to the table. So I'm going to copy that, drop it into here again. Again, I need to change this two to a three and then drop it in here, change that two to a four and just drop something in here. So finance and 10,000. And then it works dynamically. What that means is if I add a new row, 1009, uh, just put test in there and 12,000. If I drop this down, 1009, it's going to pick that up. So not only has it updated the list automatically, the VLOOKUP is linked to the table. So the table grows organically as we add new rows. So the message here from me is really clear. Tables are your friend in Excel use a table. Excel knows what to do with them. When you make changes to the table, all the other things that are linked to the table will update automatically. Save yourself the hassle, use a table. So I've made a few changes to this final version here. You can see that I've added loads more employees down to 47. What I've also added is this red identifier, which shows up on the record, the one that you've picked. If I change that, it will automatically change to the record that you've picked. And it does it all the way down here as well. You can see it's gone off our visible screen. If we scroll down, there you go, 1028, the one that I've picked at the top. If you want to know how to do that, it's a combination of the if formula and conditional formatting. I'm going to be doing videos on those in the next few weeks. So if you want to see them, hit the subscribe button and it will notify you when those come out.